Uh, welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Uh, a 19 year old female uh, came to the ER with complaints of uh, twisting her ankle while climbing downstairs. Uh, so, on initial assessment, uh, airway was patent, breathing was uh, saturation was 100%, um, respiratory rate 18 per minute, uh, circulation BP was 110 by 70, uh, pulse rate of 88 per minute. Uh, this ability, e e GCS was E4V5M6 pupils bilaterally equally reactive and exposure uh, GRBS of 98 milligram per deciliter patient was afibrillating. Why you checked GRBS for this patient? What was the indication to check GRBS in this patient? No. Now, coming to local examination, um, patient was... Head to foot examination. Head to foot. No, second rate examination. Second rate, right? You are saying it as a trauma case. Yes. Present as a trauma. Ample okay. history. Okay. Primary survey, mm. ample history, mm. head to foot examination, right? Mm. Sir, uh, on ample history, uh, patient, uh, basic, uh, patient uh, complains of uh, alleged history of uh, twisting her uh, right ankle uh, inversion. Uh, like, um, you know, she inverted her right foot. Uh, while climbing down stairs, she uh, skipped one uh, stair and fell down. Uh, immediately following the uh, fall, she could stand and bear weight. Uh, but after some time, uh, she noticed swelling on the right ankle and the pain increased. Following which, she came to uh, the ER. Uh, there is no um, uh, regular medication as such. Patient is not patient is not allergic to any medication, and there is no regular medication. And uh, on when arrival, patient had a pain score of around uh, 6 by 10. Uh, then on... Uh, how did the patient arrive to your... Picture. Uh, how did the patient arrive? Go yeah, by car. Like, car, uh, car. I don't know. <laughs> Whether patient walked into ER or not. No, did not walk. You told patient skipped one, one step. step and had a inversion injury and mm -hmm. fell down, right? So, we are expecting a ligamental sprain in this case. So, the, now the grade of ligamental injury is what we are concerned about. Mm. So, easiest way to identify is whether the patient can bear weight and walk. Mm. So, if yes. patient walked into your ER, definitely patient is going to have a grade 1 yeah. injury or no significant injury, isn't it? Yeah. So, just so, that part. Uh, mm. uh, any, then, into ER, wheelchair. But, uh, okay, fine. Uh, sir, uh, then uh, she was having a pain score of 6 by 10. Initially, uh, we uh, applied ice pack to uh, decrease the swelling and also uh, give her uh, one uh, injection, uh, ketorolac, for the pain. After that, sir, uh, we went on to uh, examination. Uh, in, uh, on inspection, there was swelling on uh, near the right malleolar region, right lateral malleolar region. Uh, there was no sign of any uh, uh, bruise. Uh, like, uh, and on uh, palpation, uh, there was increased temperature. There was tenderness over the right malleolus. If bruise was there, what did what did it signify? So it will be either grade two or more. Uh, yeah, you, you should suspect be... a ligamental like injury, hmm. isn't it? So uh, then, uh, on examination, oh, sorry, on the Palpation, uh, there was uh, tenderness and temperature was increased, uh, swelling was there, mm, restriction of movement was present, there was no loss of movement as such, but restriction was there. She could plantar flex and dorsiflex, but with the pain, minimally, slowly she could do it. Uh, she could not invert the foot. Uh, following that, uh, sir, um, we planned on for x-rays. Uh, so, we took uh, x-ray of the uh, right uh, hmm. ankle. Okay, fine. Hmm. So, in this case, so this is a very clear-cut case of ankle sprain, right? Hmm. Um, so, we don't have to think about much DDs and all. So, when a patient gives history of like uh, inversion injury, there is, most probably they will come and tell that I have sprained my ankle. They themselves will say, I have sprained my ankle. So, you need, what are the things you need primarily? You need the mechanism of injury. injury. Yeah. Why that is important? So, inversion or reversion to uh, uh, localize the ligament which yes. is… Yes. Most common injuries are ligamental ligament. injuries rather than bony structures. Mm -hmm. So, we want to know what type of ligamental injury are we dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, what are the three ligamental structures we are looking there? So, 
sir, uh, basically if you have an inversion injury, we are mostly looking at a uh, lateral ligament uh, tear. The lateral ligament complex consists of three uh, ligaments as such. It will be the uh, anterior talofibular ligament, the posterior talofibular ligament and the calcaneofibular ligament. Yes. Uh, the most common of them uh, to get injured is the anterior talofibular ligament. Then if the patient had a, a mechanism of injury of aversion, uh, then it would be the medial uh, ligament complex which would be injured. Deltoid complex. Which is the deltoid. Medial uh, deltoid medial ligament, deltoid complex. ligament complex. complex would be injured. Then uh, with aversion sometimes, patient can have a high ankle uh, Injury, high ankle sprain hmm. uh, that would uh, that's known as syndesmosis uh, injury that would contain of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament um, transverse, transverse uh, tibiofibular, tibiofibular ligament and the interosseous membrane between the fibula and the uh, tibia so basically the ligaments connecting lateral part of your fibula hmm. uh, to the calcaneum and um, talus and uh, medial aspect uh, we have a Deltoid, it is a long stretch of ligament, which is the most uh, strongest. strongest ligament is the medial deltoid ligament complex. Yeah. Then we have ligaments that is supporting tibia and fibula, holding together tibia and fibula together so that knee joint has, knee joint has three different uh, bony structures involved. No? So, each ligaments are holding these three structures together. So, these are the areas in which we are suspecting. So, as you told, inversion, we are looking at lateral, eversion, we are looking at medial and dorsiflexion. That means if patient is like I was, for example, football, football players, they come and kick the football, suddenly before hitting the football, they hit the ground. So their leg is plantar flexed a lot. A patient will have anterior uh, tibiofibular uh, ligament sprain. Patient can get dorsiflexed, high extens um, forced dorsiflexion of angles, mm. especially when they climb onto stuff, they couldn't get grip and foot get locked between two surfaces. So, forced dorsiflexion or forced plantar flexion can cause syndesmosic injury. Basically, syndesmosic injuries means that it's a tibiofibular ligamental injury. We are not looking at an angle per se, it's a bit higher than angle. Okay. So, these are three things. This is why mechanism is important. The second question is always, immediately after the injury, what did you do? Mm. Whether you could walk mm. or you could not. Any significant ligament injury more than grade 2, patient will say, I had difficulty in walking initially itself. It is not a progressive condition. It will it will have happened then on the time of injury itself. Usually grade 1 injury patients could walk, they could bear weight, uh, they will have minimal pain post injury. But over time, when inflammation sets in, they will conceive more pain and edema and they become uh, concerned about the injury and they come to us. So, that is one of the second question we need to ask. What you could do after the injury? Once the mechanism and uh, debility that uh, we have assessed, uh, we can now go to uh, think about uh, fractures. So, there can be uh, skeletal fractures also. Most commonly it is ligament injury. More than 70, 76 yeah. percentages are ligamental injuries. Very rarely only bony fractures happen and bony fractures are more common when there is a high velocity injury or dangerous mechanism of injury. These whatever we are uh, saying here are not dangerous mechanisms. So, if at all in these kind of patients like this patient, if at all the patient had an eversion injury and uh, um, presents to you or any injury and presents to you, how do you assess this patient? Now the question comes assessment, right? So as you told, inspection, palpation features are there. So basically what you are assessing is what type of injury are you dealing with? One of the easiest ways in which you should see cases in ER is by Ottawa? Ottawa angle rule. Angle rule. So, Ottawa angle rule is basically made for what? It's basically made for what? Ottawa. What kind of x-rays we Yeah, to take. make sure you don't have to progress to take radiological imaging for lower risk patients. Basically, it's saying that a patient presents with angle injury. If Ottawa rule is not met, the patient's ligamental injury is not severe enough for radiological examination or active management, only supporting care is enough. 
So easy disposition of patient is for what Ottawa angle rule is made. So can you explain Ottawa angle rule? So in Ottawa ankle rule, we have two sets of uh, imaging. One is the ankle uh, an ankle set of X-rays, and one is the foot set of X-rays. So uh, we have uh, four points here: A, B, C, D. So A basically means the um, posterior edge of the lateral tip, uh, lateral malleolus. B would be uh, the posterior tip of the uh, medial malleolus. C would be the uh, base of the fifth meta metatarsal bone, and D would be uh, the navicular bone. So then uh, we can divide the foot into the uh, malleolar region as well as the midfoot region. So in uh, ankle set of rules, uh, basically we have to check for A and B. That is the uh, posterior uh, edge of lateral as well as medial malleolus. Why? If there is any tenderness. Why? What are we expecting there? Why posterior edge of hmm. both malleoli we are palpating? Ligament in, uh, insertion. Yes. So the, lateral attachment. ligaments, since there is three distinctive lateral ligaments, it's more likely to have lateral ligament injury rather than the bone fracture. But in medial ligament, the medial lateral ligament is too strong that when there is significant exertion, the tip of medial malleolus is torn, avulsion of the medial malleolus. So, patient can have fracture, avulsion fractures is possible there. To assess that is why we palpate the tip of malleolus. Actually, posterior tip of malleoli is what we are to palpate. Then what is the second palpatory point? Uh, um, the uh, the uh, second set is for the foot uh, x-rays. Uh, the one is the uh, base of the fifth metatarsal and other is the medially uh, the uh, navicular bone. Yes. So, uh, this is other ligamental yes. uh, insertion yes. points. Base of fifth metatarsal and navicular bone. If these tender points are absent, there is no requirement for a X-ray there as such. Okay, then for foot X-ray, angle X-ray done. And whether patient can bear weight and walk. These are the things that… Bear weight after the fall and while walking into the while walking. These are the things that we look into at our knee school. So here itself, uh, following this rule itself, we are looking for local signs, we are looking for palpation, we are looking for tenderness. Now, definitive tests that do. Will you do definitive tests in an acute angle injury patient? You really don't have to because most common being ligamental injury, X-rays is not going to give any uh, extra features and you, even if you do your examination, patient's acute presentation and ongoing pain usually will mask the real injuries. So patient may not be cooperative, you may not get clear picture. So uh, very unlikely, our examination report results will be accurate and even if your examination results show ligament injury, there is no difference in acute management. So even if you do uh, inversion test, inversion test and you are saying, ah, there is lateral ligamental injury, true lateral ligamental injury, but that we got from the mechanism of injury itself. You can't predict the grade of injury and your management of the injury doesn't uh, matter what the test result is. It only matters patient's objective finding of the pain. If patient is feeling the pain is too much to bear and can't bear weight, it is a grade 2 injury. If it is uh, mild pain and patient can move, move about with the uh, injury, it is grade 1. Cannot walk uh, with the pain is grade 2. And grade 3, there will be joint instability. So, joint instability is the only thing that we need to look. Patient will say that I can't even put the foot down. The patient will be having severe pain. So, these are the gradations that we look into. Then, what is one another test that you can do in an angle injury patient which will uh, let you know what type of ligamental injury? Inversion, aversion and all is there, but all those things are clearly associated with the angle, right, where pain is there. What is one other test you can do in which patient may not have that much pain, but will tell you whether uh, examining uh, tendon? The squeeze, squeeze, squeeze test, test is done, no? Test, so, so basically? Basically, uh, we have to uh, press both the tibia and fibula together, mid-cuff. Uh, we have to just press. If the patient is having pain uh, up anterior to the uh, ankle joint and uh, above the lateral malleolus, a bit, a bit proximal to the, to the angle, angle joint, joint anteriorly. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest thing. Yeah. Anatomical uh, uh, certainty is important, but mm -hmm. to be frank, patient will, when you press the forefoot, tibia and fibula together around the mid, not uh, proximal end, towards the midpoint of the calf, 
you press the fibula and tibia together, the transverse and the anterior tibia fibular ligament holds it in place. So, if anterior ligamental injury is there, the fibula will be getting compressed and patient will have pain. The pain will not be at the angle, it will be a bit proximal to the angle. So, you can know that whether it is an angle injury or a fibio, tibio fibular injury you are dealing with. This is one test you can do because you are not touching the injured site, you are touching somewhere else. So, this is one test you can do. Otherwise, also you can do the inversion test, inversion test. So, uh, if a patient is having medial ligament injury, passive inversion patient will have pain. pain. In uh, lateral ligament injury, passive inversion patient will have pain. These are the inversion, inversion tests. And then also your drawer test and are there, very difficult to do in an acute setting. So, we will just skip that. Okay. So, <coughs> Obviously, X-ray uh, requirement is based on Ottawa score. So, you take the X-ray, uh, you roll out a fracture. Once fracture is ruled out, how do you dispose this patient? Yes, uh, the initial uh, acute treatment of the patient can be uh, like we can use a uh, mnemonic uh, price. So, it is basically a position, uh, position of the patient, uh, rest. Uh, position of the site. Uh, position of the site, uh, mm. rest to, uh, to the particular joint, uh, ice uh, application and uh, compression and elevation. So, uh, positioning basically um, the joint should be immobilized, uh, then uh, rest, uh, 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 immobilized and rest should be adequate, then uh, ice. We can apply avoid weight avoid bearing. Weight bearing. Normal anatomical position uh, with the compression bandage can be given mm -hmm. to keep the joint in position. Mm -hmm. Re uh, avoid weight bearing, ice pack for uh, reduction of inflammation and analysis and elevation to decrease edema is what you symptomatically manage. What else will you give to the patient? Following that, sir, uh, according to the grading of the injury, uh, grade one will uh, just ask for rest and immobilization uh, and ask not to bear weight. Compression bandage and elastic bandage can be applied. Compression or compression elastic bandage, bandage can be applied. Mm. Mm. So, in grade 2, uh, lateral and medial uh, injuries, um, uh, lateral injuries will ask patient not to bear, uh, bear weight in mobilization. We can apply uh, this air cast uh, or that uh, or a cast, below knee cast can be applied for uh, Here we do below knee uh, cast, cast, isn't it? Uh, ideally, patient requires supportive care and uh, uh, rest only with a joint uh, immobilizer rather than a compression bandage a be better joint immobilizer and uh, review but in our institution we put a below knee cast um, on a bit of uh, anatomical position of bit dorsiflexed uh, angle uh, we put and ask them to review in orthopedics in seven days is what we do uh, grade three is a uh, complete offloading uh, not to uh, and around for 10 to 14 days definitive with, cast with definitive cast and crutches if needed uh, for uh, avoiding weight bearing crutches has to be given or else they will use that leg only to walk right okay what if you have a grade 3 injury patient uh, so you are suspecting grade 3 injury your fractures you are ruled out with x-ray uh, would you consult a orthopedic surgeon right now after putting cast, uh, like we, can, we can ask for a consult? Uh, we can refer to orthopedics. This patient definitely requires ortho evaluation because mm -hmm. when we say grade 3, we are looking at a complete rupture of ligament injury. Not only in grade 3, even grade 2 ligament injury patients, we should refer to orthopedic surgeon for joint stability evaluation. But that can only be done after 5 to 7 days of rest and analgesic treatment. So, this patient should be discharged with a NSAID and the price acronym that we told and ask them to review in ortho in 7 days in which they can remove the slab and reassess the joint. Because all the tests that we told, the inversion test, inversion test, drawer test, all these is much more better done and accuracy of the tests are improved once the inflammation is relieved and patient is pain free. So, uh, Injury should be looked by orthopedic surgeon, but only after the acute treatment part. 
and offloading even though patient we are advising to two to four weeks of offloading they should not wait for that much time to consult a surgeon because if it is grade three ligamentary injury is there they should plan for other investigations mm -hmm. right so th this patient came to you this is a very uh, dangerous mechanism of injury the patient had history of uh, forceful uh, injury forced fall or something like that you are suspecting grade 3 patient is severe pain patient can't even put the foot down take an x-ray x-ray nothing is there uh, will you take a mri to confirm your diagnosis no, sir. why no, sir. Uh, acute uh, setting mri won't uh, show any uh, changes as such because uh, there will be edema and there will be inflammation uh -huh. so we have to wait for that to subside so it's not like mri won't show any changes the changes will be masked because of significant edema because of edema the level of injury will be understated we will not know whether that much injury is there or not that's why mri is not at all required in emergency setting it is done in four to six weeks after the initial treatment if no improvement then only they assess and do okay so another uh, thing if patient is present with angle injury what other history you can ask mm, so any like previous, previous injury, injury of the same or angle okay. patients who have already injured an angle tend to injure that angle repeatedly so previous same ankle injury history you can ask if it is there uh, they will be having recurrent injuries there and uh, possibility of uh, severity of inj uh, injury might also be elevated anything else nothing no? early remobilization like nowadays uh, uh, even if they are um, like in a cast that they have to keep this tell this tell movement should be uh, continued that's the even though we told all these things, all fracture patients, peripheral pulsations and peripheral sensations should be looked into. Even though we are rolling out uh, fractures on X-ray, sensations and vascularity should always be assessed before putting the patient on a cast or discharging. That need to be told. Okay. Anything else?